Anybody do it? This is such an honor, and uh, I guess let's start with, with this. Um, so obviously, now with Cobra Kai being the huge, wonderful success that it is, you've had the opportunity to revisit these absolutely iconic characters, and now we're getting more in-depth and more of a backstory. So I want to know, what's been one of your favorite new qualities that you've learned about each of your characters? <laughs> Billy and I grab the mics to see who's going for us. Right. <laughs> each other. I mean, how do you pick one? Just one new quality. I mean, they're all. You can pick more than one. <laughs> um, listen, uh, these characters are, have evolved 30 years from where the movie took, you know, left off. So there's a lot of fun. We get to paint between the lines with, you know, I, I like the, the new updated Johnny, kind of stuck in the 80s, hard to go on his sleeve, kind of lost trying to find his way. Um, you know, as opposed to playing, you know, just the bad guy uh, chasing down Russo, who actually turns out isn't such a bad guy. <laughs> he has his moments. You know, I, I, uh, you know, it's interesting because I, I probably would have, before Cobra Kai happened and, and the, the show hit, and these uh, these great writers came up with the, the concept and a way to tell the story fresh and new, without just doing a redo. I mean, I would have figured by then, LaRusso probably would have learned most of the lessons he learned from his great master, Mr. Miyagi, but um, the, w one of the interesting things is learning how he, he, even these decades later, still slips, falls, scrapes his hands, scrapes his knees, gets caught up uh, sometimes in those knee-jerk reactions instead of using uh, some of the wisdom that he sheds on some others, and, and so Playing an adult uh, guy without his mentor still needing to rebalance his life at times has been um, enjoyable to do, certainly as the series has gone on um, more so. So, you know, you, you never know what's behind that door. And so it's, it's been really a joy. I think that um, the greatest thing that I can conceive really is I always wanted the writers to write more vulnerability to this character. You know, make him, you know, texturize him with emotion rather than just be the tough guy from Karate Kid 1. And the first flashback that they put on the air, which was season three, of him being in trouble in, when he was in service, is when my son, my real son in life, plays a bully that bullies me when I work in the bu as a busboy in <clears throat> 1965. And there it was, the first flashback, and it was showing a vulnerability that he wasn't an impossible character. He wasn't the John Priest from Karate Kid 1, you know, and there he is being bullied by this other character who's, you know, uh, a beast. And everybody thought that my son, in real life, was playing John Priest, and ultimately John Priest was the one who was bullied. And so it, it's been fascinating to sort of ride that crest with them developing, you know, flashback by flashback and everybody gets a chance to see what John Peach, how or what he really came from, you know. And that's the most exciting thing for me. And do you want to tell us a little bit about joining the franchise? I'll be brief because I'm just lucky to be up here with these guys. <laughs> I know these, all these men personally, you guys have no idea how much uh, work these guys do to bring you the entertainment they do. They're incredible, so. a very small fraction of, this, of the show, so I'm, I'm grateful that I had that, and, and it wasn't the exception that he was explaining, but John Kreese will always be a freak in my eyes, and that's pretty much what So obviously this show teaches a lot of life lessons and gives a lot of advice, so I want to know, uh, at any point in your life, whether it's your career or personal life, what's been some of the best advice that you've received? Through the, through the show and the movie, or just that best uh, film? In general, in yeah. General? <laughs> um, this I got one, Ralph. <laughs> That's a true partner right there. <laughs> this is a good one, though. It applies to everything. My dad always said, hold it loosely. Don't take it so serious. Hold it loosely. Enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. 
You know, that was like, when I started acting, I was, I was 10 years old doing commercials. My first commercial, I was actually 12. I didn't get one for two years. But it was like, my dad was in the industry, and when I, when I started doing commercials, I was doing baseball, football, and sports, and all that. And it was always have fun, hold it loosely. I'm taking it so serious, and it frees you up then to enjoy it, and not grip it too tight. So, you know, hold things loosely, because things change. Things are constantly changing, so. You know, um, and even and that can apply to my character because once we were deep into season one, I realized that like uh, there was a couple of scenes we did and things I had to say where I'm like, okay, so Johnny Lawrence isn't really mine anymore. Like these writers are creating this Johnny Lawrence, and I got to go on this ride. So you learn you have to hold it loosely, and you have to kind of go with it, kind of go with the flow, bend, be, be malleable, be able to pivot in life, so you're not so stuck in a certain way. That's served me well, and it will now serve each one of you well. In your own <laughs> Connection to Billy is he's always uh, for a long while when we'd have conversations about things and, and, and characters and, and our characters, he would say, as long as the character's falling forward. And I, I love that the first time he mentioned that just in, in a casual conversation, and I use it uh, now. So, yes, I've learned something from William Zafka. Uh, and I think it's a good piggyback because, you know, we're all going to fall, we're all going to slip, we're all going to. Like I said in the, when I answered the first question, skin your knees, I, skin your knees and scrape your hands. And it's just as if, you, if you're falling forward, then you're learning, you're taking those next steps as opposed to tumbling backwards and, and uh, spiral. There you go. It's a love fest up here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I would just tell if anybody asks me what, what you come up with, you know, tenacity for actors, for artists, and all that. The most important thing. The greatest thing I can, I can impart on you, you all should watch a TV show called The Offer on Paramount Plus, which is all about the making of The Godfather and the insurmountable amount of obstacles that are in the way of the producer, Al Reddy. And I was around when this movie was casting in the early 70s in New York, and it's quite, you know, it, it's really, the truth, and it gives you a sense of whatever's not working in your life, tenacity will make it work. And you just follow through with conquering the obstacles. And this eight-part show is about this <coughs> movie called The Godfather that you know nobody wanted to make. And then, you know, not only did it become completed, but it actually became the classic that it is. So everybody can get a chance to, you know. It, it's a great lesson in tenacity and inspiration, for sure. While you're waiting for Cobra Kai season six. Continue to wait very patiently. And so my final question before we go to questions from y'all, we do have a microphone over there if you guys want to line up. Um, I wanted to ask about your preferences because we're living in this age of streaming where sometimes we have the opportunity to binge watch a show in a day or we can watch it week to week. So I want to know if you guys have a preference when it comes to watching Cobra Kai. Do you say we watch it all in one day and then we have to wait for the next season or do you think we should do week to week? <laughs> well, it's a, you know, it's a Netflix thing, uh, certainly. Uh, I think for the most part, all their shows drop all at once. Is, is that true? I think so. I think where HBO or now Max, they're changing them all the time. But uh, you have to wait that, that week. And so you, going from a show that you can binge all in a weekend to a show that's, you got to wait till the following Sunday, becomes frustrating. But there's just something wonderful about, you know, having that time to let it digest and breathe in your mind and evolve. And then, you you know, often it's like, if my wife and I feel like, what happened, what happened in this last episode? We watched it like, you know, it's a week ago. It feels like ten years ago. I think I think for Cobra Kai, right. for us, it's a little bit different. Uh, certainly for me, because it's you know, I hate that angle on my face. I used to look good on that side. Now why why are they doing that shot? So I start tearing it apart, you know, for all the wrong reasons. But um, I can watch like two episodes at a time. It's it's tough for me to sit through the the whole thing and not. When you do it, it's very different. But um, I know a lot of our fans, uh, you know, they love that they just you know, take the weekend off to see it. Do you guys prefer the, the bingeable watch versus the weekly? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> like, we, so raise your hand if you'd like to show all the drop and, and you can finish it in, in, in five hours. Okay, and then raise your hands if you if you would say stretch out a couple of weeks. Interesting. Sixty-four. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm with you. I, 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 first of all, it's really hard for, for us to watch it. We're so close to it, and the characters. It's we're watching it through a million different lenses, and of course, we're always watching it through our performance and through our experience in it. So I, I, I'm we're, I'm not a good judge of the show in that sense. But um, it's constructed in, in ten uh, half-hour uh, parts, so it's like a five-hour feature film is what it ends up kind of being. So it's designed to keep you to turn the page. So when you get to the, it's not like the end of episode one is going to conclude and you can, okay, let's see what happens next week. It's a, it's a, it's a page turner. It's a five and a half, a five-hour movie basically. So it's designed that way. Um, I would prefer like a little distance between it. I know that some people hold off, you know, to what like for, I'll watch a couple at a time. That's all I can do, and then you know, wait for the ending for later, you know, because, but then you got social media, you got your friends that are going to ruin it, so it's all, you almost got to rush to watch it before somebody tells you something you don't want to hear. That's kind of unfortunate, I think, in a way. But, um, yeah, so, you know, we just, so, uh, you know, is, just stay off social media, don't talk to your friends if you want to be Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. More mic advice from William Zapka. All right, so we're going to go over to y'all in the audience. Uh, we do have a mic. So why don't you tell us your name and your question? Hi, I'm Steve. Nice to meet you all of you. Enjoyed it since 84. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, for all three of you, uh, what martial arts did y'all have to learn? Was it different styles to learn? Because of, obviously it was two different styles of fighting. And how much of the stunt work in the fighting did you have to do? on camera. Well, we try, we try to do as much as we can. Um, um, might have been a bit easier in 1983 than <laughs> 23, but we, uh, we try to keep ourselves in shape and, and work, work hard. Um, I studied the classic Miyagi-Do Gojuru style, which is um, very different from Tang Soo Do, or the, the, the Cobra Kai, uh, more aggressive style. It's, and we try to implement that into, into the storytelling as well. You know, it's episode, in season four, the kind of Johnny Lawrence, Daniel LaRusso rematch on the, the, the uh, deck in the back of Miyagi's yard, but it was very specific, uh, different styles, and we, we really tried to hold true to that and make that its own Try not to make that a remake fight and make that something present. And, and so the style is really different. The stances are different. And, and so I haven't had the opportunity um, to really study multiple uh, uh, styles of martial arts. But uh, we, we really take a lot of pride in it. Yeah, we used to study Tang Soo Do, which is a Korean style. So when yes. we were training for Karate Kid, we got our, our, the guy that did this, the referee. You guys know the story about Pat Johnson? Raise your hand if you know the story about Pat Johnson. Okay, so Pat Johnson was the referee in Karate, in Karate Kid. He was also the guy that choreographed the entire movie. He trained Ralph, he trained, trained us. He trained us, yeah. He would do four hours a day, five days a week, and he would train him in his Gojuru and then Tang Soo Do. And uh, so in the movie, we did everything. I don't think we had a double at any point. Um, and then on the show, we have doubles for things like going through windows and <laughs> flat screen televisions, televisions and things like that. Um, so we try to do as much as we can because it's always more authentic and organic if it's us, even if it's a little sloppy, even if it's, a, it's actually better if it's a little sloppy and not, you know, some perfect video game martial artist that's boring to me. So, um, yeah, so we, we, do, we do it all as much as we can. Well, my favorite fight scene is when I fight the two of them and go from, go through the window. And, you know, and, it, and that was rough. E even us standing there in the broken glass and we didn't go through the window. And, you know, you get cut up, you know, because glass is glass and you're on bare feet. But, you know, it was really a combination of so many emotional feelings, you know, to have, you know, you know, Robbie there, who he has the problem with uh, as the father, and Ralph saves me from killing Billy, and, and then we all go through windows, and I had not fought Ralph ever, you know. So it was really, it, it was fascinating. It was just a, a culmination of a lot of emotions for me, and uh, the mere fact they had to do the window twice because the glass fell oddly. The fact that the stunt people were brilliant 
but the glass fell, fell funny, so they had to shoot it again. It's all to the credit of our stunt people who are just wonderful. You know, they make us all look great. Make me look really good because I'm getting on to 106. <laughs> you know, these guys can still fight, so. But I, I think, you know, the stunt people on our show are absolutely brilliant. And they've won Emmys for it as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rhonda Marsh. I'm a Southern Girl Tattoo, and my question is, if Mr. Miyagi, Pat, were still alive, do you think that he would be a part of the show? What he would think of the show? Um, I often wonder, like, you know, what would he approve of this? Would he play a big role in the show? Um, I, of course, because he was such a huge uh, influence in um, Danielson's uh, story. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's tough to answer um, for him, but I really, he was so, um, such a good person and such a cheerleader to all of us and such a big part of the magic that happened back in, you know, in 83 and with the movie in 84. And that character is um, beyond iconic. Um, I think he would have thoroughly embraced the opportunity to tell the story going forward. I know he always wanted to work on the potential of some story of Miyagi furthering. So I think he would have, how much and how big a part and when he would have come into it, I think that would be up to the, the showrunners and writers who have just beautifully crafted the Cobra Kai journey. Um, but uh, I think he'd, uh, he'd be front and center up here and he'd probably be doing stand-up comedy for all of you <laughs> right now. So uh, that's my assumption. Well, rest in peace, Pat. We really do miss him on having this show. And I'm glad that you guys use uh, him a lot in pictures and in memories. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. Uh, hello, my name is Jonathan, and I was just wondering, what's y'all's favorite scene to have worked on from any of the Karate Kid movies? Favorite scene? Yes, sir. In, in, the, in the Cobra Kai or the Karate Kid movies? Karate Kid. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ralph's favorite scene is when... <laughs> Let's see. Remember when, uh, when Johnny was uh, minding his own business at the Halloween game? <laughs> when he was just being, living in peace with his friends and with the universe, and then Daniel we hooked up a hose. <laughs> um, no, that was a fun scene. I don't know how you pick up. For me, I mean, it was all fighting. Um, the, the, honestly, I would say the tournament. When we did the tournament, after all the rehearsals we did, all the training we did for months and months, to actually go and be live, and they come out and they had all the, all the extras there were fans. It was during an actual real karate tournament. They actually staged real karate tournaments. So there were real karate kids, real families there. So the energy was really organic. It was real. It was like, and so when we walk out, they don't know us from Adam as far as like our karate skills. And I'm walking around with a black belt and the energy just felt so great. And it was, um, it was really something, you know, it really, really was to, to put on it. all the training that we did to come in. It was like a dance. The energy was was what you see in the movie. I mean, it lived what we experienced. You guys have seen and experienced with us. So it was real. It was awesome, and um, that was it. You know, and my the part I didn't like the most was the very very ending. That <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually did love that. It was fun. We shot that a million different ways of the crane kick. You know, the long, the low wide. There was a time Ralph got on the ladder. We did tight. Um, it was super fun. It was fun to take that kick and. And to, and to play that, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a show, and it was, it was great. So it was illegal. It was very illegal. I mean, we're not talking about. Oh, people are talking about the legalities. Were illegal. It's illegal. No, yeah, it almost took two event. minutes to get to illegal. I'm so, so funny. I don't know. That it's pretty funny. Like, the crane kick was illegal, but how many like times did he get punched in the? You get punched in the face. Like, there's so many illegal punches in there. It just happened that, you know, you stole the title. That's all. <laughs> Well, you know, for years I've been telling everyone that Johnny Lawrence is really the karate kid. 
and uh, it hasn't done me much good, you know. But um, but my favorite scenes really are the tournament scenes. All those those moments watching them fight and screaming, finish him, and doing the little sick thing with the blood Billy's nose, and sweep the let you know, no mercy. All the interaction with the Cobra Kai, you know, with Bobby taking my wife and beating that. I, 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 and those lines stay with me. I don't want him defeated, you know, I want him beat. And, oh, I want him out of commission. You know, all that. Those are great moments, you know, and, and um, I actually feel that the communication and the respect that Cobra Kai had for me and that I had for them, that is, it's insurmountable in the form of theatrical experience. It's the best. One last thing, just, I was, we watched this, being filmed some of this, but watching it on opening night, like in the premiere in Westwood, the part of the movie where I got chills was in the middle when Daniel's tired, he's like, you know, when am I gonna learn how to fight? When am I gonna learn to kick? And then he says, show! And he does the wax on, wax on, that magical moment. I mean, to be there for the, you've seen it now how many times, so you know it's coming. But when you were in the theater for the first time, and you're going, the kids waxing cars, do like, like, I'm in the movie, and I just remember getting chills when that, when that happened, and just like this elevation, this thing that happened. So, watching the movie, I think that's my favorite scene in the movie, um, to be honest, as far as like, the, the drama and stuff goes. And, uh, it was great, it was a really special time filming that film, as, as I tell you, here we are 40 years later, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Thank you. You're too, you you're too short, you can't ask a question. <laughs> or tippy toe it. Alright, what's your name? My name is Liam, and I'm wondering how many seasons there will be of Cobra Kai. This, um, we've done five seasons, and we're getting ready to shoot the sixth season, which will be the final season of, of Cobra Kai. Um, um, everybody like this is... Uh, <laughs> but you know what? We don't want to overstay the welcome. We want to land the plane and the, and the right spot and do justice for all these characters. Um, very few shows go six seasons these days. Everything's three, four tops. And, and I think that, um, you know, uh, to, to land it the right way, to leave you maybe wanting a little bit more, and then maybe there's another chapter of something else, or there's a movie, or there's another storyline within the Karate Kid universe that will, will branch off again. So, we're not done yet, we're just waiting to allow, to be allowed to make more. So right now, we're, the writer's strike, we're kind of just waiting. Yeah. But uh, it's a big sixth and final season coming to you. What's your name? My name's Landon, I was wondering how much karate you guys actually know. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> More than you think and less than we know. <laughs> All right. That was an amazing question. <laughs> What's your name? Georgia, and my friend Phil wanted me to ask who was the most fun on set? Who is the most fun? Yeah. Who has the most fun? Who is the most fun? Who is the most fun? <laughs> Who is the most fun on the set of Cobra Kai? The people who cook us lunch. <laughs> You know, a lot of the young cast members are a lot of fun. They, they bring a lot of energy uh, to it. Um, Jacob and Sholo, and Jacob plays Hawk, and, and Sholo plays Miguel, and Tanner plays Robbie, and Mary plays Samantha. You know, there's so many, and they, they really bring uh, an energy to the show. I really enjoy uh, watching them, uh, you know, take on the next generation. Smiley man. <laughs> It's a great question. Yeah, I think all the, the young cast brings the energy. We love 
Uh, Jacob, who plays Hawk, he's, he's especially energetic and crazy and funny, and he can be really funny. In, in, in between takes, he can just be bouncing off the walls, and then they say action, and he really he, yeah, goes into a tear, or goes right into character. Um, so it's fun. We, we, we enjoy the, the younger cast. They keep it fresh for us and, and you know, all our energy feeds. But I think really the whole, the whole cast, the whole set is always really positive from yeah. our director to all our, our, everybody, all the whole cast in general. We, we're kind of like we are here, um, just, um, you know, in geese with headbands. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, George. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. to try to get as as possible. What's your name? Um, my name is Quentin, and um, I was wondering if any Karate Kid, the ice break that Daniel did, um, if it was real, and if it was, how many takes it took? <laughs> and it was the last part of the question, if it was real, and what was it? How many takes it takes. We did a bunch of takes. It was, um, they were scored. They were ice, they were about an inch to an inch and a half ice slabs. I think there were six or something. You guys would know better than me. Um, <laughs> there were seven of them, Macho. There were seven. <laughs> Uh, and so the last one was made of plexiglass, like a, a you know, a, it wasn't ice. The, the first bunch were ice, but they were scored, meaning they would take a, like a, a, and scrape it so it was weak in the center. And sometimes they'd actually put them in and they would break. So, um, but, but once I got to like take seven or eight, this part of my hand was starting to get not only cold, but a little red. So then I would, I think in the movie, you actually see me kind of palm it. I kind of I start like this, and I'm like, okay, this is, this is <laughs> so, You start going back and watching, you know, and he's like, this, this is cool, I'll take one and two. But, um, yeah, I think there were six of them. And they were cold, and they were, and then hurt. A little bit. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. What's your name? My name. You got it. Aww. My name is Jason, and do you wish that Miyagi was in season five and six? Wait, say that one more time. Do you wish that Miyagi was in season five and four? Do I wish Miyagi was in seasons? Yeah. Um, sure, we'd all wish Miyagi to be in the seasons. Uh, and to our friend Pat Marina to be here with us. But I think the guys who write this show and all of us collaborating together do, uh, I'm really proud of the job of having the presence of Miyagi in, in many episodes and certainly every season. And he still informs Daniel LaRusso and in the, in the friendship with Johnny Lawrence. Um, they inform each other based on experiences from Mr. Miyagi. So he's kind of there in his energy and spirit. So, um, but yes, certainly, we wish he was there. Great question. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Hi guys, my name's Michael. Um, thanks for doing the show. It's so, thanks to you and the crew and the, the writers and the producers and everything, it's, it's such a joy to watch. Like, for, for my son, who's 11 now, and I'm, or 13 actually, and, and I was that age. <laughs> But like, I'm, I'm curious of like, how did this come to be? Like, it, I don't, anyone could conceive the idea of uh, Cobra Kai after Karate Kid. Like, talk about the process of whose idea first came in, who did they approach first, how long did it take? Um, just how, just kind of like you mentioned The Godfather, um, how that came to be. So. So, um, first of all, the Karate Kid's just kind of just they can do this so long, I already can feel it. It's going to take forever. Um, 15 seconds. Um, you know, it's been saturated in culture for so long, it's become part of, you know, they call the lexicon of Americana or whatever, you know, and it's Cobra Kai, Sweet the Leg, all these things, and even in different TV shows and stuff. So, and as time's gone on, Karate Kids just stayed somehow in the peripheral, you know, relevant. Um, and uh, different people took different shots at an idea, like, how did we revive this? And, um, for our show, we had three creators, John, Josh, and Hayden, who have, were the like, ultimate Karate Kid fans, like it was their Star Wars growing up, and they conceived this whole thing from front to back. They conceived it from first season to end, and um, 
I worked with Josh on Hot Top Time Machine. He was the writer of that, and I knew John and Hayden. Yeah. So um, I, was the, I was the first call, because I was a soft, easy call, because they knew they had to get Ralph, and they first needed me to say yes, so they could at least have that on their side. So, uh, so I got an email saying, hey, we, you know, we have an idea for a project we think you might be excited about. You, know, you want to have lunch? And I'm like, sure, there's a nice Mexican restaurant around the corner from my house. Like, I wasn't going to get in the car and go over the hill. And I just got in there. <laughs> I guess well go walk to the you know have some chips. And I thought they were gonna pitch me like Harold and Kumar part six or <laughs> honestly that's where my head was at. And then we sit down and the, the, the Raiders bring in chips and then all of a sudden they say Cobra Kai and then Johnny Lawrence and I'm like what? And then just spit they basically told me season one and uh, kept the waiter away and said, you know, and I said, wow, you guys, you know, this is a big idea and you can't just do this, you know, you can't just create characters that are, you know, IP of Sony and they said, well, you have their permission. So everybody had signed off along the way. They had Sony involved and all the people that needed to check the boxes and they said, we just need you and then Ralph. So um, they said, are you in? I said, well, based on what I hear, uh, I still didn't understand it all. And one of the questions was, um, you know, I said, as long as Johnny does this, turn out in the end to be the quintessential jerk of all time, because I've been that for the last 30 years. And that's my main concern, that like somehow he's gonna get the proverbial green kick and just cement him in bad badness forever. So they promised me that wouldn't get happen. Um, and then uh, I said, okay, so. Um, well, they, they explained it like it would be like if it was um, not Karate Kid related. They said we could also do the show and call it Bad Sen Sensei, like Bad Santa, but you would be the Sensei. And then that's when I clicked and I go, okay, I get it, and it's a comedy. That was the beginning of it all. Then, so I said, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm in as far as I know. And I said, now, you know, where's Ralph? I go get him in New York. And I said, good luck with that, because <laughs> I knew how tough it was to crack that, and it had to be the right thing for him. So um, that was it. And then they went to New York the next week. And, uh, I knew that Ralph would be calling me. Yes, and I did. Um, they, um, you know, these, the thing for me, you know, they come and they say, hey, we want to do a show called Cobra Kai. We've written Hot Tub Time Machine and Harold and Kumar. We want to do a show called Cobra Kai. First gut punch. You want me to be in a show called Cobra Kai? <laughs> Again, this is going to be the Johnny Lawrence redemption story, and you're going to be kind of like this rich guy who's now a used car salesman. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, but they knew every nook and cranny of the Karate Kid franchise. They really uh, cared um, and knew so much about it that I had a gut feeling that if it was time to jump in the water, I had no idea what the temperature would be. But um, it felt it felt that uh, it would be in good hands, although I wasn't completely clear on where it would go in seasons three, four, and five. You, who knows if you're going to get season one. But um, I just had an instinct about them, and I liked what they were talking about when they spoke about Robbie being Johnny's son, and him training under Daniel, and Miguel being sort of the quintessential, uh, well, or, or the, uh, the, um, the millennial Daniel Russo, single mom. I started to see those parallels, and it sounded like it was a fresh look into getting in that world without trying to do Karate Kid 5 or 6, you know. Um, but still, you didn't know, you know. And uh, it's been pretty amazing. It's been pretty amazing. So credit those guys. They really do a beautiful job. Yeah, I'm not saying that we would now just be brief. I, I met after the, the two of them had signed on and they said, we want you to come in in the episode 10 of season 1. And I said, why can't I come in? earlier than they said. <laughs> and they said, now we want you to set up season two. And they were quite apprehensive because they had admitted this on the podcast that I had with my son and daughter. And this podcast about a year ago, they admitted that they were really apprehensive about telling me that we want you to come in in episode 10, season one, because we thought you were going to get pissed off and nail us. <laughs> and I, it was preposterous to me, you know, because, but they truly said that on the air on the podcast, and I thought it was hysterical that they were so impressed with the toughness and the negativity of John Kreese in the movies, they thought I was really that fellow. <laughs> and I, I, I said, I cracked up, and ultimately I agreed, you know, to come in episode 10, and they were, as Ralph said, they're so perceptive. Everything you told us 
really happened in season one, two, and three, four, all, all the stuff, you know, and I, my bit was that I wanted the character to be a little more vulnerable than, than he was in the movies. And they agreed, and the rest is history. But it's all in the writing, all in the writing. Yes, so we can all enjoy it. Jesse, do you concur? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, I, I apologize. This has to be our final question. I'm so sorry, but we're at time, so okay, it's I'm, on you. Okay, I'm Jeremy from Nashville, and I'll be very quick with my question. Are there any plans for any type of spinoff? I think there, there's discussion. We, we don't have, I certainly, let's see, if they, if these guys do. I don't have the first-hand information. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Contracts are poor. <laughs> but uh, I know there's discussions um, through the, the creators of the show. They're really tight lipped about it because they also don't want to say, hey, we're doing a Samantha and Tori show or we're doing a Stingray and Burt show, which is perfect for Friday on ABC, if you ask me. <laughs> Buddy comedy. So I, I, you know, I think they're keeping it un under wraps, but I know there's discussions and. And um, also, I mean, the Karate Kid universe is so open, you can go, I mean, we, there's definitely discussions about a Miyagi origin series, uh, which I would love to see who that man was before we ever met him, you know. And so, um, let's see what happens. All right, thank you. Okay. Yes, then. Professor Scott, I appreciate it. Answer it. My name is Tree. I have a question that we all want to know. All of us, watching you guys since the 80s, who would win in a real fight? I'm saying no holds barred, skill to skill. Who would win in a fight? Death, leopard, or poison? Death, leopard. Death, leopard. And this is Best question ever.